Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. There's a United States congressman named Warren Davidson who yesterday morning put out three tweets with false imp information about Ripple and the, the distribution of XRP and also claiming that in all three of these tweets, uh, talking about how Ripple is the central authority of XRP, which is uh, unquestionably not true. Now, this particular congressman he happens to be very pro-crypto. He also met in person with attorney John Deaton. I believe that was earlier this month. Um, as I record this, what is it, March 25th now in uh, 2022? That's yeah, March 25th, Friday, March 25th, 25th now. Uh, so attorney John Deaton even met with Warren Davidson. I'm going to share with you some specifics on that on this video. Uh, but um, he seemed very positive based on what attorney John Deaton said uh, regarding the nefarious intent of the SEC and how unfair it is how they've harmed XRP holders and gone after Ripple. All, all really, presumably, great sounding things. And we're, we've been hoping that there would be some action about that in the future as a result of this. But then we see these very strange, incorrect tweets from the same congressman about Ripple and XRP. Then he deletes them um, after silencing people from participating in, in at least one of the three tweets that he deleted on this topic. So... It was a botched handling of what's going on. And, and also, now there are concerns because people after this happen, they're like, okay, what the heck is going on here? Well, there are members of the XRP community that have been digging up uh, more into his history as it pertains to crypto specifically and have found all sorts of ties to the uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And uh, there's there's questions being posed, and I understand why they're being posed. Is, the, is he really just like a Bitcoin and Ethereum maxi? And is there a reason that he said what he said about Ripple and XRP when it's so blatantly false. Well, we're going to be digging into all that. But before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, I want to be clear, um, none of what I'm saying here is intended to be taken as an attack on Warren Davidson. Um, I actually err on the side of giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. Now, I do, you'll see as I go through this, I do think he kind of botched the handling of this, but this is not a personal attack on him. I just think it probably could have been handled better. And frankly, he was tricked and he's not a stupid guy. And on the surface, he seems like a rather impressive individual. So it's not an attack on his character either. Like the smartest people on the planet can be tricked, you know? And I'm not saying I'm the smartest planet on the per, uh, person on the planet as proved by that sentence. I'm not the smartest person on the planet, but I, I believe I can be tricked. And if you don't believe you can be tricked and bamboozled, uh, well, then maybe you a fool son, because we all can be under the right set of circumstances. Now, what happened here is the following, and the, my, my fellow XRP YouTuber, the digital asset investor, shared uh, two of the, the tweets that were ultimately deleted by Warren Davidson. He tweeted this out. So if a central authority can dilute the value of all XRP by issuing plus 5 billion new tokens, question mark? And what's he citing here? Well, he's got a screen grab from, it could have been from an email, it could have been from a website. This is both on a fake Ripple website and it's also sent out via email, but this is a screen grab, so I don't know which he got it from. I've actually been sent messages just like this. I don't know if I got this specific one ever, but I absolutely have. And so emails have been sent to me. They look like they're actually from Ripple. Um, I also do receive legitimate emails from Ripple, so it makes it that much more likely uh, somebody in my position could be tricked. I haven't been tricked, but I'm just saying. Uh, it, it looks legit, the structure of it. And sometimes, you know what they do is you'll go to these web pages, they're completely fabricated, but all the links to make it seem more real, they do go to uh, links that are actually functional. It'll actually transition you to the actual Ripple website. I kid you not. So they're hoping that you'll click on other stuff, think it looks real, and then you'll hit the back button and it'll go back to the scam page. That's what they're actually doing. I've seen this before with my own eyes. It's completely ridiculous. So what's, what's stated here is that um, Ripple, and this is all again, this is a scam scam communication, whether it's a website or an email, what Warren Davidson is sharing here, he was tricked, and what he's sharing is, is something from a scammer stating that they're going to share or, or distribute a 5.09 billion XRP for, and they wrote, for distribution towards the, one, the ones that matter the most, our loyal users. Now, anybody in the XRP community knows that this is not a thing. If you've been here for more than like five seconds, you know this is not a thing. Um, now, I don't expect Warren Davidson to know all in-depth intricacies of every single cryptocurrency ecosystem, so I'm willing to be a bit forgiving on that personal. And I understand why other people in the community are a bit more heated than me. I'm not mad or, or heated. I'm, I'm disappointed the way this was handled, and I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt. And I also think it makes sense to look in further and see if there's 
um, any actual improprieties. That's what our community does and we should do because we've been under attack for so long. So all of that's fine. Whatever your position is, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just sharing my personal perspective on this. I don't think there is necessarily a horrifically wrong answer. You'd have to go way out in one direction for me to think, okay, maybe let's really get back in a little bit. But I haven't seen anything completely bonkers to this point. I just see people understandably upset by what's what's going on here. Uh, five billion. It's, okay, here's the thing, though. So not only did he fall for this scam email, like, why was he so eager to post it? I got to admit, I have that question. Why was he so eager and so quick to post this this damn thing? Because all it would have taken is like five a five second Google search to realize that this was a scam. Seriously. In fact, there was no shortage of people in this thread that highlighted that. Here's XRP community member, uh, not your average Joe, who shared just that, shared his own screen grab. Um, he typed in ritual has a different approach and because that's those are some of the key words in there and it brought up the scam So here's a fake ripple website with a little accent over the e. Here's another one ripple.com.pr That's another fake one looks like the real ones under that it, it takes like no effort So he did get tricked and he didn't think there it's so, okay We can all be tricked, you know, but I'm, I'm just wondering why did he why was he so eager to share this information? Did he want it to be true? What's his motivation? What's of incentives? We're going to talk more about that in just one or two seconds here. Give me like a minute or two, literally. And we're going to hop into that because that's interesting because some stuff has been found that I do want to share with you. Um, and it, it, it's legit. And I don't get into conspiracy theory stuff and I can't know what his mind, what's in his mind and his heart. So admittedly, it's just speculation. But it's reasonable because if there's a pattern of dot connecting, eventually if there's enough dots and they're all getting connected together, you know, it, it paints a tapestry effectively, right? So I'm not saying we have that yet. And it may not exist. But... It, it, it's perfectly reasonable to look into this, and you'll see, you'll see why in just a second. So there we go. There you go. Five billion XRP allegedly getting put out, and then he's saying, well, again, he, he, he says, a central authority is diluting the value of XRP by doing this. Okay, so you think that there's a central authority surrounding XRP. And then there was this tweet. This one also got deleted. He wrote, a bit of nuance from the central authority. And of course, he's referencing Ripple. And this is a fake Ripple Insights piece. Ripple Insights is the official blog series of Ripple, but this is a fake one, which is very obvious if you know anything about Ripple and XRP. And it reads as follows. Ripple has a different approach on the sustainability and incentive model for a digital asset or currency class. A hybrid inflationary system based on demand allows planned issuances of the XRP currency combined with incentive plans. Ecosystem users are awarded dividends based on their XRP balances, increasing liquidity while also enabling support and rewards for deposits and long-term investments. That's a bunch of gobbledygook nonsense. You don't get dividends for holding XRP. That is not how the XRP blockchain works, my friends. Of course not. And as far as what the scam is, I don't know the specifics of this one, but typically what happens is that you, you, you know they try and trick you into thinking that you're going to get free expert XRP some amount for whatever reason, and in order to get that, you have to send X amount, and they'll send... X amount that back to you, crap like that. And it's just, they're outright scams. And so this is the type of thing that is being highlighted here. So Warren Davidson went ahead and deleted that. And then he attempted to do some damage control. And this is where like the, the real train wreck happened, really, arguably anyway. There was this, and, and I took a screen grab of this one. Um, he tweeted out after deleting those first two tweets, he wrote the following. Deleted tweet referencing the distribution of plus 5 billion XRP by the central authority controlling supply pending authentication. So there he's still citing that there is a central authority with XRP even in the third tweet. And he's waiting to, 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 to you know, pending authentication. Warren, again, nothing personal whatsoever. What are you talking about? You have the Googles. Type it. Just type in those keywords. And what pops up? Ripple with a little accent over the E. OK, it's very clearly a scam. It, you don't need to wait any further. I don't understand. Everybody knows how to use Google in 2022. What was the purpose of that tweet? So I'm questioning that. Uh, and, and then I responded uh, af after he tweeted that I responded to that tweet and wrote. And, and this is just me. I'm just trying to share information. So like I have no especially then like I was just like I had no venom towards. I was like, OK, well, he's saying some stuff that's not correct. But I like to give people if you know me, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I want to know the full story before I have like a firm opinion on anything. And and so Warren Davidson, after tweeting that out, I, I responded to him and wrote, there's no central authority to the XRP ledger. This link shows all 100 plus validator nodes. Ripple has only four validator nodes. They have no special permissions over the XRP ledger. Also note that concentration of a cryptocurrency is different than centralization. Now, that's a key concept that I think a lot of people don't know, even people that have strong interests in crypto as he does. A lot of people don't understand that unless you're talking about a, a proof of stake model, 
the amount of the cryptocurrency in question that you hold doesn't give you special power and has nothing to do with centralization. It's like if one entity held half of the supply of Bitcoin, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin is more centralized. It wouldn't mean that Bitcoin's more centralized. I mean, there's a really, really big whale, just like there is within the XRP ecosystem with Ripple, and you either like that or you don't. You know my stance on that. But, uh, but, but again, even if somebody hold, held half the supply of Bitcoin, that doesn't change the, the decentralization of the network itself and who controls it. It just purely outright does not. And that's provably true, by the way. Uh, and then somebody within the community uh, named Alex wrote to me and said, how does the escrow work? I feel like that certainly has the potential to centralize this currency. Now, at this point, I thought, OK, uh, Alex asking a legitimate question. This is fair. Um, I just like to share knowledge. So I'm like, we can use this as like a learning opportunity for anybody that's actually curious. Alex asked a perfectly reasonable question. How does the escrow work? And then expressed a concern, feeling that it certainly has the potential to centralize this currency. So I actually wrote up a response, a response. And when I went to hit submit, you know what I saw? This, what's in the red box at the bottom? Who can reply? People that Warren Davidson follows or mentioned can reply. Folks, he shut down the conversation. So it was after I posted this first comment, he shut down conversation to anybody that's reading the thread. He didn't want to hear anything from anyone. That's not a good look. And it was extra annoying for me because I had just written a thoughtful response to Alex here and I'm just trying to share information about XRP and the XRP ledger and I can't share that now. So I'm like, okay. It started to grind my gears a little bit. You know, nothing personal. Why would you do that, Warren Davidson? You, you, I can understand deleting the first two because that was false information. I get it. You're just trying to be responsible. I can respect that. You got bamboozled. Fine. It happens to all of us, right? But this one, why would you delete this one? I guess you didn't like the comments and the feedback. And, uh, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating here. And then you just decided to shut it all down. Well, that's not a good look. And that's not going to make anything better, honestly. That's just my humble opinion. So at that point, I, I took a screen grab of that and, and uh, retweeted this, I retweeted his tweet, because which he ultimately deleted, by the way, that what I responded to up there, he, that was the third tweet. He then deleted it after I took the screen grab and shared it. And I tagged him. I wrote, hey, Warren Davidson, I noticed that you shut down open communication on your XRP tweet. What is the rationale for this? I was able to write a helpful response to you before you turned off people's ability to comment on your post. Uh, and then I continued. I wrote... I was actually writing a response to Alex and realized what happened when I could no longer post. Alex, here's my answer regarding your question about escrow and concern about XRP centralization. And I tagged Alex that he could see my response in my thread. And I wrote, XRP ledger is not proof of stake, so holding a large quantity of XRP does not give anyone special permissions over the blockchain. Here's a link explaining Ripple's escrowed XRP. So I'm just trying to help spread information. I think Alex had a perfectly reasonable concern and a reasonable question, so I'm sharing it. I just wish they hadn't been shut down in the congressman's in the congressman's thread. He just deleted it, and that's a shame. And so then I wrote, I'm just trying to share information, Warren, and I don't think that silencing the public is going to do anyone any good. So questions here. Why is he shutting down the communication? Why was he so eager to share this false information, making a claim about a central authority with Ripple and XRP after meeting with attorney John Deaton within the last few weeks before that? Why was he so eager to jump the gun there? Now, that's a reasonable question. I don't have the answer for that, but there are people speculate. In fact, here's a tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, again, the digital asset investor. And he wrote, the story here is not that Warren Davidson made a mistake and tweeted a fake Ripple article. The story for me is whether he just outed himself as a closet anti-Ripple uh, Bitcoin slash ETH maxi. I think he's earned the benefit of the, the doubt, but I do admit my antenna is up. Am I wrong? Uh... Yeah, I can understand why he asked that, especially when you take a look at this. And I, I suspect, um, this is a little bit of speculation, I, I think he knows people, I think it's very clear, and has, has some friend, made some friends over at the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Why am I saying this? Well, take a look at this tweet from Tag XRP, who has shared all sorts of incredible, powerful, important information surrounding the happenings that led up to the lawsuit of FCC versus Ripple. He shared a ton of stuff. I highlighted a ton of his work on my channel, in fact. He's uncovered a ton of stuff. Look at this tweet now. This is where we're really getting into. This is interesting. March 5th of this year, March 5th, so just a few weeks ago, he wrote, Tag XRP wrote, the Token Taxonomy Act needs a full investigation run by ETH. Well, what's the Token Taxonomy Act? Um, not that I'm going to get into the nuts and the bolts of it here, but this is a key piece of legislation that Warren Davidson is behind along with some others in Congress. 
And here you can see, this is from March of last year, Davidson reintroduces Token Taxonomy Act. And he does have an understanding that there's not sufficient clarity in the space, so I respect that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he's a cheerleader for the space in general. That's good. And so he's pushing the Token Taxonomy Act, as highlighted right here on his website. And, uh, and here you can see Warren Davidson. This is his website, serving Ohio's 8th District. Okay, so I'm not saying that the Token Taxonomy Act is bad, but what did Tag XRP highlight here? Uh, here it is right here. Here's a piece from an article. The Token Taxonomy Framework, version 1.0, was developed by more than two dozen businesses and overseen by the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. This whole thing that he's pushing, which is important presumably for, for uh, you know, his political aims, his, his career, he's going to continue to be a politician, uh, you want to have successes. Well, something that he's been pushing was, was um, overseen by the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. What do you think, folks? Isn't that kind of fast? And this is before he, he did what he did. So, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm not saying necessarily that he's anti-Ripple and that he's anti-XRP, but if he's made friends with a lot of these folks, you know they don't like Ripple and you know they don't like XRP. And you can only imagine the poison and false thoughts and ideas that have been spread and, and put into his mind if he actually is friends with some of these people. Can you imagine like the Joe Lubin types? He'll just, he'll just outright lie about XRP. He'll just make crap up. And so it, 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 he may genuinely think, because he's trusting these people, if, if assuming, and this is speculation, I, again, I admit that, if he's really made friends with these people, I could see why he'd, he'd uh, come across a, a fake article from a scammer talking about centralization and distribution of XRP that dilutes the price of XRP. I could see why he'd come across that and be like, yep, see, huh? this is what everyone's been telling me, but centralized XRP, there, I, I could see. If he's not done his own research to find out it's not true. You know, because, you, you know, I came into a blank slate in 2017. I was told all sorts of crap about Ripple and XRP, but I did my own research and I was like, oh, wow, this is a bunch of nonsense. It's actually decentralized, so on and so forth, and been running in this direction ever since because I was getting lied to as a newbie in the crypto space. So maybe something like that happened to him. And he's like, and then he's just like, yep, yeah, here it is. Maybe it's just as innocent as that, because maybe he's been fooled uh, not just by the scammers, but also by people that help put this thing together. Now, that also doesn't mean necessarily the token taxonomy framework is bad if it's if it's, a, if it's intended to equally help uh, everybody in the space, okay, fine. It doesn't mean that the Enterprise Ethereum license can't do something good in life. I'm not even saying that. But I'm just saying, think about the people that he's made friends with here. And then there was this. Um, this is from Tag XRP also. And uh, wrote, uh, here is Warren Davidson pictured with 2-bit idiot, at 2-bit idiot, which is the handle for Ryan Salkis, who hates Ripple and hates XRP. I've covered him on my channel so many times. And then he named some others here. Um, and he writes, uh, all consensus and Ethereum people. So there's Warren Davidson and, uh, here's Ryan Selkis and then the other people that he highlighted. So again, if these are the people he's around, like Ryan Selkis, he's, he's put out blatant lies about Ripple and XRP. He just has, and I've highlighted them and I've torn down his ideas, nothing personal against him. I don't know him on a personal level, but he's, he's, he's spreading what he's spreading, whether, he, whether intentional or not, he's, he's putting out, he's put out many times false information. And so I've just corrected the record. I'm thankful I have this platform where I can do something like that. So clearly there is this collaboration, right? Uh, now there was this from uh, attorney John Deaton. So after this all went down, uh, attorney John Deaton wrote the following. It's easy to make a mistake reading false information in this digital age. If Warren Davidson believed the false info, I understand his tweet. More importantly, I'm hopeful he will make inquiries related to the gross appearances of impropriety regarding the SEC. I will update. Yeah, and so that's a pretty well-measured approach. I respect the approach John Deaton took there. That's, that's pretty close to my initial thoughts. Uh, the only thing that as I thought about it a little bit more, I was starting to think, okay, but why was he so eager? And, and, and there could still be an innocent answer for that. He could have just been tricked, and then he just wanted to get out information that was in line with what he had told, been told was true. He could have just been tricked on that front as well. You know, um, but why did he think there's a central authority? So I'd still be willing to hear Warren Davidson out if he wants to put out a public comment or something like that. I hope he does. I hope he doesn't just do, uh, you know, the thing that's just going to leave people feeling, you know, neglected or riled up, you know, whatever, whatever you want to word it. I, I hope he doesn't just try and broom this and pretend like it didn't happen. I, th I think he needs to address it. There, there's many tens of thousands of people, not hundreds of thousands of people at this point that have seen this because things really start snowballing social media. It probably is literally hundreds of thousands of people that are, that are aware of this. I wouldn't be surprised anyway. And so I, th I think it would be wise to just say something 
uh, you know, it just you know, clear the air. You know, not everybody's going to hate you. There are all sorts of people that are going to be reasonable. I think most people don't just off the bat just hate you right away. Yeah, there are some people that were really upset. Fine. I don't think that's most people. You know, most people will be willing to hear you out and just take a rational approach. I'm willing to take a rational approach here. Uh, and then there was uh, also this. So this is from March 3rd, 2022, because, again, to Warren Davidson's credit, he he met with John Deaton. That's awesome. That's incredible, because we, we need Congress to act and help uh, fight back against the SEC, effectively. We do need that. And, and to Warren Davidson, to his credit, he was doing that. Um, and so John Deaton, on March 3rd, weeks before this all happened, John Deaton shared this tweet. I want to extend my sincere gratitude to Congressman Warren Davidson for taking the time to discuss our request for an investigation into the huge conflicts of interest and gross appearances of impropriety related to the decision to give Ethereum a free pass and attack XRP holders. Congressman Davidson expressed real concern for XRP holders, including the more than 600 in Ohio that have joined as amicus in the case. Congressman Davidson understands this space and the issues better than most. We need more like him in Congress. So th that makes it extra curious. What happened in the last few weeks where you go from, oh, wow, this looks like there could be uh, instances of impropriety. Let's have an investigation. Or at least willing to hear the idea, uh, willing to hear him out. How do you go from that to posting a, a scam a article about Ripple and then claim that Ripple is a central authority surrounding XRP, which is highly consequential in, whether, in terms of whether or not XRP is actually a security, mind you. Because you're talking about a prong of the, the Howey test. Is there a common enterprise? If you say central authority, that's a common enterprise. That's that's one of four prongs of the Howey test. And if that one passes, yeah, we actually got some serious trouble at that point. I mean, you need all four, you know, all four prongs of the Howey test. But that's the one that's going to be hardest, in my humble, unprofessional opinion. That's going to be one of the hardest ones, if not the hardest one, to uh, to prove. Is that there is some sort of counter enterprise. Because if you just look at the technology, it's provably the case it's not true. With Ripple running four validator nodes having no special permissions. So anyway, that, that's that's what that is. Uh, and then there was this um, in response to that um, a chip from the on the chain YouTube channel wrote Warren Davidson is a true patriot who serves we the people. And, and look, again, everything else on the surface, he seems like a very respectable individual. So no, no venom here coming from me. Um, I do think he should clear the air a bit. That's just that's just my personal opinion, but um, I'm not mad about this. I was just I was a little bit frustrated and disappointed a little bit earlier, in particular when I found out that the message I was typing, I was like, oh, I can't even share this with people. <laughs> like I put some thought into it, you know. And I took the time to look up a link to share with people, and you know, whatever. But then he shut down the conversation. That was a little frustrating. But in response to that, John Deaton wrote, in speaking with him, I said, I believe the crypto contingency, the voters who support crypto, are going to speak loudly in the midterms, and that may be the case. Uh, then there was this, um, in response to a tweet from uh, fellow XRP YouTuber Mikkel XRP, John Deaton wrote the following, Congressman Davidson made time for us and is knowledgeable. He didn't promise anything, nor should he, but he listened to our concerns. I'm confident eventually inquiries will be made over the gross appearances of impropriety at the SEC. DC needs more people like Warren. Yeah, see, again... Of course, we agree with that. Yes, we agree that. Yes, we need that, which just makes what happened yesterday morning that much more curious. Like, what in the ever loving hell went wrong? I would really like to know. And so, um, that tweet where John Deaton uh, expressed his sincere gratitude to Congress Warren D Davidson, which I just shared with you a second ago, uh, the, the, the digital asset investor retweeted that and wrote, Is Warren Davidson doing anything after this meeting? That's the question. He has the info. And this was after the debacle happened yesterday morning. We're asking, okay, so he has the information. Is he going to do anything? Are we going to see any action? Or was he just humoring John? I hope it was more than just humoring John Deaton. Um, from what, uh, uh, John Deaton's a smart guy. I'm sure he appropriately read the response from uh, from Warren Davidson. So I'm hoping that there actually is going to be some sort of reaction. So anyway, I, I just, I'd urge people, I can understand why people are upset and frustrated and all this stuff. Um, perfectly reasonable. I just urge you to just be like, let's take a step back and give him a chance to respond. If he doesn't, I'm going to be that much more disappointed. <laughs> but I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been less than 24 hours. Let's, let's give him a little bit of time to respond and see what he does. Because on the whole, um, he does seem to be a force of good for, for crypto in general. But if his idea is that um, XRP is, is centralized and he seems to be lacking all sorts of information to come to that conclusion... Uh, we just need to have a conversation. If we can do, do that and just get through, that's the that's the best approach. 
not just uh, banishing him to the woods and saying, no, you are gone. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, you know, he doesn't have to be the, the bastard child. Like, that's not, that's not my approach personally anyway. And again, I, I'm, I understand why people are frustrated, but I, I think it's better to just do the best we can, just, you know, remove the emotion from this. I just think logically, like, put yourself in his shoes. What, what if it is something as simple as, okay, you had a misunderstanding about the centralization of XRP, and what if he has been fed a bunch of lies, and what if he did fall for, for a phishing scam? Just about well, in the sense that he was he was sharing it as if it were real information. Like, what if? And I don't know. I need him to tell us. But it's certainly possible. And if that's the case, I don't think it's as I don't think it makes as much sense to be angry as if there's some sort of venomous intent and he's attacking XRP and the XRP community. So let's see by you know his his actions moving forward here. But um, I'm just going to remain neutral at this point. Basically, I'm not mad. I'm not optimistic. I'm just perfectly neutral at this point. Balls in his court. Let's see what the hell happens. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.